Welcome to ECLMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed division in liquids and gases, and we realized that division is faster in gases than liquids. And we gave some reasons for that. We said gases have low density, and again, we said gases have a high kinetic energy. And then finally, we said gases have weak intermolecular force between their particles, therefore they move fast. But does it mean that all gases move or diffuse at the same speed? That's what we are going to discuss in this lesson, the rate of division of gases. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe a simple demonstration to show the rate of division of different gases and then describe division through porous materials. So we are going to realize that different gases have different rate of division and this depends on their density or relative mass. From your knowledge of measurement, we said density is equal to mass of a substance per unit volume. So you can see density is directly proportional to mass. Therefore, if a substance has high density, it means its mass is also high and the particles between that substance are heavy and therefore the rate of division will be very slow. And if a particle has a low density, it means its mass is also low and therefore the rate of division will be very fast because if a particles are light, it means they will be moved very fast. So in this case, we are going to consider two gases here. We have ammonia, ammonia gas, ammonia gas, which is written as NH3. Then we have another gas, which is hydrochloric acid gas, which we write as HCl gas. Now, what you are going to realize from your chemistry, you can calculate the relative mass of these gases. Ammonia is made up of nitrogen and, and hydro three hydrogens. Nitrogen is atomic number 14, and then uh, nitrogen is atomic number 7, mass number 14, plus three hydrogen, so it will be 17 grams as the relative mass. Then hydrochloric acid, after calculating the relative uh, formula mass of uh, HCl, it will be 1 plus 35.5, which will be 36.5 grams. So as you can see, HCl gas is more heavier or has a large mass than ammonia. So in this case, we expect ammonia, which has less mass, it's light, it will move fast. And hydrochloric acid gas, which has a large mass, its density is high, it will move very slowly. So in this case, if we want to demonstrate or to do a very simple experiment to demonstrate this, what we will do, we will take a combustion tube, we take a combustion tube, and then a cramp and stand it and put it on a stand. So we will have our cramp here. We will have our cramp here. This is our cramp like that. Then we will have our stand. Then on the other side, we will also cramp it with a stand like that. Then one side, let's say call this one side A and side B. On side A, we will put a cotton wool inside. We we'll put a cotton wool here. This is a cotton wool. Cotton wool soaked in HCl. So if we have a cotton wool soaked in HCl, it will produce hydrochloric acid fumes. Then on the other side here, we will have a cotton wool. Cotton wool soaked in ammonia, NH3 gas. So it will produce hydrogen or uh, ammonia gas fumes. Then what you do, you will take a cork and cork this part here or close this part here. 
then you also close the other end so that the gas cannot diffuse outside. So this is a cork. So what you will do, then you will set this experiment like this, and then what you will realize after some time, this gas will diffuse to that point from where it is highly concentrated. Remember, uh, HCl is concentrated on this side A, it will diffuse towards side B, and then ammonia is concentrated on side B, it will also want to move to this side. But now, will they move with the same speed? That's what we are going to see. After setting your experiment like this, then what you will realize is that the cotton wool soaked in HCl will produce HCl gas, which will move to this side. Then the one soaked in ammonia will produce ammonia gas, which will also move to this side. Then after some time, you will see a white deposit. A white deposit will be formed close to the cotton wool or to the side where which has a cotton wool soaked in HCl gas. So you will see a, a white deposit. White deposit. That is the observation that you will make in this experiment. And this white deposit, it will be formed close to the cotton wool which is soaked in HCl. If you look at the distances covered here, this one is X and then this one is distance Y, you are going to realize that ammonia, the cotton wool soaked in ammonia produces ammonia gas, which will cover a very long distance, that is X, and then cotton wool soaked in HCl will produce HCl gas, which will cover only a short distance. Now, a point where these two meet at the same time, that is where the reaction between ammonia and HCl take place. That reaction you are going to cover it in chemistry, but it simply is ammonia reacting, reacting with HCl gas. HCl, remember these two gases are colorless, then they will produce ammonium chloride. They will produce ammonium chloride, which is now a solid and it's white. So this one are colorless, but now when they react, they will form ammonium chloride, which is a white deposit. And this deposit will be formed close to the cotton wool, which is soaked in HCl. And now the reason why uh, ammonia covers a large, a large distance is because we said the mass of ammonia is 17 grams. Now, and that mass of HCl is 36.5. So it means um, HCl is very heavy, it has a large mass, its rate of division is less or slow, and HCl, its mass is 17, density is low, it moves fast to cover a large distance. So in this case, it means different gases have different rate of division. And now if you perform this experiment under high temperature, it will take a very short time for the white deposit to be formed. And the reason why it takes a short time for the deposit to be formed close to a, a cotton wool which has HCl is because when you increase the temperature, the kinetic energy of the two gases will increase. And when the kinetic energy of these uh, particles increase, they will move very fast. And therefore, temperature will increase the rate of dilution of these two gases. So we will also realize that dilution can take place through a porous material. Porous materials, these are materials which have some fine holes. And to demonstrate this, you need a, a glass beaker. This is a beaker, let's call it one. And then you need another beaker two, which will contain water down here. Then the beaker which is down here, you will equip it with water and then connect a glass tube to it. And this glass tube should lead us to the inner part of this porous material. So this porous material inside here, it has air, it has air. Then now you cover this uh, porous material with a glass beaker, and then you introduce a hydrogen gas from the gas supply. Now when the hydrogen gas comes, it will go through this space inside here, inside this, in between the porous material and the beaker, and then hydrogen outside here will be highly concentrated, high concentration of hydrogen. 
and then inside here where we have air we have low concentration of hydrogen now in this case hydrogen will diffuse from where it is highly concentrated outside into the inner part which is lowly concentrated and for us to observe that indeed hydrogen is diffusing inside we will observe the water down here this this glass tube the water which is inside will decrease the glass tube this water which is inside here will move out and then after some time we will see some bubbles of a gas escaping this means the hydrogen which has diffused inside has made the gas which is was inside here or the air which was initially inside to move out so that hydrogen can occupy that space now if you remove this uh, beaker one the one that i called the beaker one the one which was covering the porous material now we will have a change of gradient of diffusion where outside we will have low pressure because now there's no hydrogen being supplied inside the gas which had gone inside the hydrogen gas which i had diffused inside now we will have high concentration of hydrogen inside and then outside we will have low concentration of hydrogen outside but since hydrogen diffuses from where it is highly concentrated to where it's lowly concentrated then hydrogen in this case now will diffuse outside and then it will leave an empty space here now the empty space which will it will leave here it will create a low pressure zone since we have atmospheric pressure down here in this beaker which is pushing this water downwards it will make this water to rise through the delivery tube to occupy the space which has been left by diffusing hydrogen outside so for us to see that hydrogen is diffusing outside we look at the water level along this glass tube the water level will be rising rising means hydrogen is diffusing from inside to outside in the first case the water was moving the hydro the water was moving out of the tube even we were seeing bubbles of a gas inside water in that case it meant hydrogen diffused from outside to inside the porous material now that will mark the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic particulate nature of matter i hope you have really enjoyed this topic now in the next topic we will discuss thermal expansion we are going to see how solids expand how liquids expand and how gases expand and you will need this knowledge of particulate nature of matter